Okay, welcome to week four of our leadership series. Thank you so much for joining us. And tonight we're gonna to be going over leadership don'ts. And um, I want to say first that this is not a list of things that I made up to tell you not to do. This is a list I also follow. Do, am I perfect at it? Absolutely not. So um, there might be a couple of the things that, I mean, you guys voted you wanted this tonight and we're all on such a high, I didn't wanna kinda come in with a bunch of don't do's, uh, but you voted you wanted this and my dog is barking. Um, so uh, this is not a bunch of slap you on the wrist, uh, you're in trouble, you doing this. This is to open your eyes to be a better leader. So if you can take that as like, and apply those things and know that it, this is to help you, not to tick you off that I may be talking to you. I'm not talking to anybody on any of these things. Again, I'm not perfect, but this is what it requires to be and develop into a really good leader. And so we're gonna start the list and I'm gonna go down some of the things and uh, at the end, I'll turn off the recording and we can we can certainly talk about any of the questions that you have. So tonight, these are uh, this is the week number four and these are leadership don'ts. So the most important thing that you, especially you brand new leaders, is that you have to learn this, and it you, it's something that sometimes you you are tempted to want to talk about things and you just can't. You never complain down. You take complaints up. You never complain to your downline, no matter what it is. You you could not like the way the system is you know, not taking your order, don't complain to your downline, take it to your upline. Um, it's not that you just have to be this perfect positive person all the time, but that's just not the way it's done. And I know a lot of you don't know that because you've never been in a leadership position before, but you never ever complain down. You only complain and have issues and you go up with them. Um, this is a big one and a lot of you are, um, in a lot of ways, I mean, I, I mean, I know I'm a type A personality. I'm a red. I get a lot of, a lot of the people that are like me, uh, and they want to have like a, a, a black or white answer for a situation. And they want to teach everybody the same exact thing to get off to a great start or to match their efforts or, uh, whatever it is. And, and they're just no two people exactly alike. That's something you're going to have to learn. Uh, and the first thing that you need to learn is don't feed the baby steak. So you can't feed a new person. Uh, you can't feed a baby steak. You have to meet them where they are. Remember we talked last week about meeting them where they are, coaching them, finding out where they are and where you coach them from instead of assuming you know where they are, find out where they are. So don't put too much on a new person. You will run them right out of the business. How many of you have had a new person sign up that was all excited and you're all excited and you gave them all these things to do and added them to all these groups only for them to not respond to you anymore? Well, you fed the baby steak. You have to back up and listen to them and talk to them and find out where they are before you know where to coach them from. And this is something that just takes practice and it just takes being learning to be a really good listener. And, you know, it's something I'm always working at. Um, remember last week we talked about you and, and becoming a good listener. A good listener really listens to what you're saying versus thinking about their response while you're talking and they're not listening. Um, these are some of the things that will help you keep from feeding a baby steak. Uh, so that's one of the main things you need to learn as a brand new leader, as an existing leader, is you've got to learn that temperature and don't feed the baby steak. Um, do not compare. Comparison is the thief of joy. And if you compare where someone else is it, someone else is to your journey, you have just, first of all, you took all the fun out of it. Um, you took all the joy out of it. And your story and your journey is not going to be like anyone else's. Your story is your journey alone. And let's keep it that way. Uh, it's special to you. So uh, sometimes it's just human nature and you can't do anything about it, but try. Just try to remember that 
your story is your story. Just like I was sharing with about Lisa Hodgkinson, I'm sure it was very upsetting to her to watch all these people pass her by, but she kept going. And there's, there's going to be some times that it's just hard. It's just human nature. But if you can remember that God is going to bless your business at the perfect time, it's supposed to be blessed. He just needs you to work the business. So he has something to bless. So that's kind of how all that works. Um, don't make a situation worse. Uh, never make a situation worse. Um, listen, um, listen to them and hear them out and just remind them that I don't know all the answers, but I promise you I'm going to get an answer for you. I understand that this is important to you. And so sometimes, like I, like I talked about last week, you know, we're, we're, when we miss when we read someone the wrong way and we take something the wrong way, we may, we may tell that person, we may read completely wrong. And that's why a lot of times it's best to pick up the phone and call because you can't tell emotions through a text and, um, or a voice text helps. But when you can pick up the phone and, and call and work it out, you're always going to be better. So just remember your job is to make a situation, no matter what that situation is that you've been presented with, your job is to make it better, not make it worse. Um, stay away from toxic people. Um, I can tell you that this is a big one because you're the, you've heard this before. And if you haven't, you're just a brand new baby leader. You're going to hear it a lot in your future, but you're the product of the five people you spend the most time with. So choose those people very wisely. And if it's people in your circle that your circle of people that are negative and the circle of people who they're always, no matter what, they're going to complain. All of a sudden, you just start spending a lot less time with them. It's not that you do it intentionally. It just happens because you're just like, man, do you need some personal development? I mean, it's just the way it is. It's easier to be negative. It's easier to um, go down that road. It takes extra effort to be positive. But once your mindset is there, is you spend less and less time with those people. So if you are the smartest person in your five group of five, you are in the wrong circle. Um, you always have to be stretching and reaching for to better. And so choose those people wisely. Choose someone that number one, you would trade, trade bank accounts with. And number two, they're where you want to be and find there's all kinds of different leaders here. You can find somebody that it speaks your language and, um, it may, it may be someone above your immediate leader doesn't matter we're all here so you can connect with everybody can connect with somebody you just got to keep going to your five um okay there's two things that can destroy your business 100 percent destroy it and they're fear and anger these two things can destroy your business um all together um eliminate the meltdown it is a big no-no do not have a meltdown. Um, a meltdown comes back, will come back to haunt you. And you just lost a ton of people's respect because what a meltdown does is show that you are really not in control of your emotions. And as a leader, even if you have to hang up, hang up, but do not just remember eliminate the meltdown altogether and you'll be all right. Um, never be passive aggressive. So let's just say someone on your team does something and you're like, you know, Oh, you know, or whatever the case may be. And the next thing you know, that person's posting something like, you know, that, you know, you feel like is directed directly at you, but it's passive aggressive and don't fall, don't sign up for that class. Just ignore it, move on. And whatever. I mean, there's tons of passive aggressive people. There's always going to be passive aggressive people. And you just got to say, well, maybe it's not at me, but you know what, if it is, I don't care. I don't care. I mean, you just got to let that stuff just roll right off of you. Um, avoid rants. That's around the, the same thing as having a meltdown. Um, this is a big one. It doesn't matter how much good you've done. It doesn't matter how much you've helped someone. They're going to remember you at your worst. So don't give them a few things to choose from. <laughs> Just remember, and, and like I said, we're human, we make mistakes. None of these things are ever gonna be perfected. This is just what it takes things to work at. Does everybody understand that? That I'm not sitting here saying I have all these things conquered. I'm saying these are the things that it takes. 
Um, avoid the three D's, discourage, demean, and disapprove. Um, you cannot demean somebody. You cannot, um, you, 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 you just can't and never discourage ever. doesn't matter if the company, you know, like you are, you're, you're in this amazing company and you know, you guys are really blessed because when we came here two years ago, constantly ran out of, um, of, of our products. Everything was on back order all the time. They didn't have a handle. They weren't prepared for the growth that we brought over and it was very difficult. And so when you have these big, big growth spurts like this, sometimes the company has to adjust to um, demean, disapprove, and discourage. Um, it is, is like, you know, when your downline comes to you and says, oh my gosh, my customer didn't get this, blah, 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 blah. you know, just remember the standard answer that gets me a, a lot of traction is Modair will always make it right. There's no Modair emergency. And they're going to make it right. So if you can just work with me here for just a minute, I promise you we're going to take care of you. And your customer's going to be taken care of. Also, I'm sorry. I apologize for your inconvenience. But we're going to get this taken care of. And I hope that you can just re breathe and reboot and know that it's going to be taken care of. Um, don't push someone right out of the business. That goes along the lines of feeding a baby a steak. Um, do not chew gum, uh, Paige. We talked about that one, I think, in the very, very beginning. Um, I told you guys the story about the gum, and um, her story was very similar to mine, and I will never get caught chewing gum again in a professional um, situation. And so just remember that. Just remember that when, because a lot of times it's a nervous habit, you know, and but it just kills professionalism. It just absolutely kills it. Um, you can always say more, not less that there's never been a more true statement. So really think things through. Um, being a good leader requires eliminating the knee jerk altogether. It's, you have to eliminate the knee jerk and not respond. Um, but you can always say more, not less. Do not get drunk and act like a fool. That one will destroy, you'll never get ahead. And, you know, I, there's a lot of people um, in this group alone who've, who've said to me, I've never seen you drunk. And my answer to that is, and you never will. Because once I destroy the relationship by you de looking down on me, I can never get that back. And I, I don't like to not be in control of what I'm saying or doing. So um, it's just a personal thing with me. Do whatever you'd like to do. Um, but when Tony Zalecki came to Memphis and he told us his story, it solidified, uh, exactly that. And the story that he told was, um, he and Sarah started and they were doing network marketing. And, um, at the time he was on, he was an alcoholic and he also did drugs and, um, it was destroying his marriage just before he had kids. And, um, he went to work with one of his big legs, like his biggest leg in his business. I don't remember where Colorado, somewhere like that. I don't know. And, um, he went and they, the team had, they had a get together. They went to dinner afterwards. They went bowling and, um, he doesn't remember any of it. He doesn't remember anything that happened and he doesn't remember what was said and he doesn't want to know because it was bad enough that his entire leg quit. So, um, just remember, you have to keep it together. You have to be professional, but yet have a heart and, and be able to relate to these people. Um, it's just, a, just don't go down that road. I'm just, if, if, the, if you want to be taken as a serious leader and you want to be admired and respected, I'm going to tell you, keep that in check. Um, the next thing is, uh, avoid judgmental thoughts. Um, overwhelmed is a circumstance. It's not a feeling. Um, you can control that. Overwhelmed is a circumstance. It's not a feeling. So once people kind of get that, um, this is a big one because we all want to do it, but when the horse is dead, get off of it. Uh, we want to breathe life into people. We, we, we believe they have so much hope and promise that, um, we believe in them more than they do their self. And 
we just want this so badly for themselves. And you remember, you cannot create desire in someone else. It's impossible. So when the horse is dead, just get off. Don't keep trying to ride a dead horse. Um, pour that energy into someone who wants it and is wanting this. And sometimes it's hard because like I said, we want, we know their situation. Maybe they're broke. Maybe they are going through some really difficult times and we want this for them so bad because they need it so bad, but we can't create the desire in, in someone else. Um, we talked earlier in one of the, the things about, you know, knowing what your strength is and what your weaknesses are and just owning it. Don't try to make something that's your weakness that you're going to do. So like if getting someone off to a great start is not, something you're good at doing, let someone who is do it and just keep listening until you're better at it. Does that make sense? Don't be like, Oh, I got this one. I've listened and I've got to do this and I'm going to, I'm, I'm better. I promise if it's not your thing, you're better off to let someone who is better at it, handle it until you start getting feedback that you're good at it. Um, does that make sense? I mean, I just want you guys to know that because um, a lot of times we, we kind of think we're better at it than we are. And all of a sudden, none of our people are getting off to a good start. And these people that we're talking to are not succeeding. Well, I would reboot and say, what am I doing wrong here? You know, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? I want to learn. Um, we said, I said this last week, um, when it's controversial or if it's something that you need to keep to yourself, don't text it, don't type it and don't repeat it. Keep it to yourself take the high road, take the road with most resistance. Um, it is truly the road less traveled, but it is the road that will make you the most successful. Um, avoid at all costs, creating drama. Um, it's just impossible to, to be taken seriously as a leader if you are part of the problem. Um, if you are creating some of the drama that is going on in your organization, it's really hard for you to kind of gain, start getting that, um, getting those wheels turning to be, to be the leader that you want to be. Um, never have the take your ball and go home attitude. Um, that, that comes when it hurts our ego or our pride a little bit. We want to say, I'm oh, fine. I'm, I'm taking my banner and my pins and whatever, and I'm going home. I mean, you have to rise above those circumstances and you just have to keep a smile on your face until you can get somewhere and sleep on it, think about it, pray for, pray about it, whatever it is you need to do before you respond. Because if you continue a conversation at a time when it, it needs, it doesn't need to happen now, you've just created a bigger problem. So first of all, make sure your emotions are in check before you handle any type of conflict. Um, negative ends with you. And that kind of goes along the lines of a lot of things that we're just talking about. If the negative thing ends with you. Um, in other words, you put a stop to it in your organization. Now you put out that fire. Remember I told you last week, but leaders carry two buckets, one full of water, one full of fire. I mean, one full of gas and you have to learn when to apply which bucket. And there's a time when you got to pour cold water on it, and kill it and say, all right, that's done. Now let's move on. You know, there's nothing that can never be apologized for. There's nothing that can never be mended if you just are willing to talk it out and let that person how much know how much they mean to you. And there's going to be bumps. There's, it's just impossible to avoid bumps. But as you become more and more um, rounded and growing, then you learn how to handle situations a little bit better. Um, what you feed grows, what you starve dies. That goes along the same exact lines of it ends with me, uh, the negative ends with me. So what you feed grows, what you starve dies. Um, I told you guys at the beginning when we started this, you know, we all have those people that they just, they want to complain. They want to be negative. They want to complain that it's not working for them, that they're doing it and it's not working. And so-and-so took their customer and, you know, you just have all those different things and you have to shut it down and you just have to make the right decision and explain why you made that decision. And if it's, and if it's always the right decision, you have nothing to worry about. Um, but you have to sometimes squash some stuff and, and then move on and um, learn from it. If you don't learn from the mistake, it was for nothing. Um, we're always learning. And the worst part about being a leader is to make a mistake and not learn from it. And I can tell you that I've made tons of mistakes and I've learned a lot. And I strive to be a better leader each and every day. But do I have it perfected? 
nowhere near it. But I know the rules, the rules that I'm laying down for you guys, these are the rules. And these are the rules I try to live by and try to do my best at. And I promise as you're writing these things down, if you make these your rules that you try to live by to grow as a leader, you're going to be in the same boat. Um, you can either be a victim or a leader, but you can't be both. So you have to decide, you know, um, so-and-so, so-and-so, you know, they, they went around me to someone else because, you know, why'd they do that? I mean, you, you can't be like, you know, a vict in a victim mentality, you have to be like, well, that's the person that spoke to them more they connected with. And that's perfectly okay. I mean, don't take, don't let that hurt your ego or your pride. Just, just remember that's what we're here to do. I mean, if someone connects with Brianna more than me, hallelujah. I mean, that's, is it, isn't, is that not a relief? I mean, like, let's go. I mean, that's perfectly okay. That's what she's there to do. So don't take it as a, that's my team. And she went, she went around me or she did this or what she did that. That's not, that's not it. These other people are in place for your people too. It, when the men, that's the take your ball and go home mentality that you have to avoid. Um, let's see. Don't talk more than you listen. Um, and never, ever, ever have doubt about your company. Um, is, is our company perfect? Well, heck no, but there's nothing I wouldn't do for them. I mean, my belief in Modair is off the charts. If it weren't, I, did, I don't think I could find any success here. So that has to be your mentality too. I truly believe that I'm with the best company, the best people and the best products that anyone has. Are there other great companies out there? Yes. But I got this one. This one's mine. And I'm very happy and we're just getting started. So you have to be sold on what you're selling. You have to be sold on that you're happy and that you believe in what you're doing and you believe that this is your future and you believe that, you know, doors are going to open because you're doing the do's, you're doing the work, you're doing the how to's and you do them every single day. And there's always going to be, my father-in-law taught me this um, a long time ago and he could have never, ever been more correct because this was before I was ever put in a leadership position. This is before I ever did this, this industry. And that the best advice he gave me was don't ever think you're not replaceable. Some of the best advice I've ever gotten. And it's so true because how many people do you know think, that no one could ever do what they do. The minute you start thinking like that, you're headed down a rabbit hole you don't want to go down. Um, you just, you know, we each play a part and we each have our own special gifts and we work harder at the things that we want to be better at. And just never, ever think you can't be replaced. And when I got that, I truly got that. Like it really made a difference. And it, it makes you way more humble and it, it kind of brings you to the table to realize that, you know, you're not all that in a bag of chips and you never will be. And the minute you start thinking that you are, um, that's the message you're going to send to your people. And they're going to be like, she thinks she is hot stuff. You know, I mean, just don't go down that road. There's really no sense in it. I mean, there's just really no sense in trying to, to be this. Now there's a, there's a time and a place when certain things require a, a stern hand or a stern voice. Um, I'm not saying that. I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we never arrive. And you guys need to understand that right now. The minute you think you've arrived, you're dead in the water. Because that means you're, you're content. You're, you're, you're fine with where you are. And I'm never going to be okay with where I am. I've always got something that needs improvement and it needs, I need to grow or I need to work on and in all areas. And so just have the mentality that you know, you, you know, and you understand and you appreciate that you will never arrive because you never are the perfect person. You're never going to have it all figured out. You're never going to be perfect. But if you can take these things, these leadership don'ts, and start to work them into growing as a leader, man, are you going to be ahead of the game? Because, you know, in our other company, we had all these different leadership things that 
taught these things. Well, we don't have that in place here at Modair. So, you know, these are things that were said to me too. Um, I didn't make these things up. This is the way the game is played. And so when you get them and embrace them and just remember, you know, you can be who you are. You can be whatever you want to be, but you have to be a certain way for your team to look up to you and admire you and respect you and want to go with you. And that's what you want at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you've got a team of people that would go into battle for you. And they, they trust you and they, they look up to you and that's, that's what you want. And you have to earn it. It's not given. You have to earn it. So I'm going to turn off the recording.